Welcome back. In our next two tutorials, we're going to learn how to create a master rule that controls which rules are executed and in what order. We've got two rules here. Let's begin by editing rule two. So let's double click on it. I'm going to comment out this line and let's click OK. Here's the input list box from the previous tutorial. Before we create the master rule, let's slowly click on the rule name. Now let's copy it. I'm going to open Notepad, or you can use any other text editor like Word, etc., and place the rule name there. This is a good idea for keeping track of your names when you're dealing with a lot of different names, rules, variables, parameters. It makes it a lot easier to keep your nomenclature consistent, and of course, it decreases the number of mistakes in your code. OK, let's right click on our part and select Add Rule. I'm going to call it Master. Let's click OK. On the left hand side of the screen, let's expand the Run Other branch of the tree. I'm going to double click on Run Rule. Let's highlight the text rule name, right click and paste, input list box. Let's do it again, double click on run rule to insert the snippet in your code. Now let's paste in the name of our second rule, it's rule two. If you happen to be working at the assembly level, you'd use run rule in component. First we specify the component name, and then the rule name. OK, let's delete that. And let's run our rule. Let's select a length, click OK, and a width, click OK. And here is the confirmation that rule 2 has run. Let's click OK. Let's drag our master rule to the top. This concludes our first tutorial about creating a master rule.